A few years ago, I was at a dinner party and uh, I was sat next to a very nice lady who briefly told me about her life. So, her husband is of course the best husband in the world and he works for the best company in the world where he makes the most money in the world. Together with her best in the world husband, they live in the most beautiful house in the most beautiful suburb in the world. In this most beautiful house, they have the most clever, grandest kid who attends the best private school in the world. I won't go into detail of my response because some minors might be watching, but I imagine this nice lady should be driving a Range Rover. Range Rover is one of those cars which look good when they do school runs to the best in the world private schools. Range Rover looks grand parked in the driveway of the most beautiful mansion in the world. And Range Rover feels at home driving up to the best hotels in the world. Obviously. And this is a 510 horsepower supercharged 5 liter V8 Range Rover Sport. Not a measly V6, but a V8. Listen to the soundtrack. And now a quick technical lecture about the difference between a supercharger and a turbocharger. Both deliver more air to the engine, which helps make more power. The main difference is how they are powered. Turbocharger is powered by exhaust gases. But this sometimes takes a bit of time and then you get the surge of power as the turbo kicks in. Various car manufacturers are finding various ways around this problem, for example using two turbos, where one operates in the lower and the other one in the higher rev band. On the other hand, supercharger is powered from the crankshaft. It sucks air from the outside and compresses it into the engine. It is less efficient than a turbo, but it is the preferred solution when you need quick response and a lot of power. Reaction to a gas pedal in Range Rover Sport is so instantaneous and the car accelerates so quickly that when I found a gap on a roundabout, I had to step on the brake so as not to go around twice. On a country road, when I was overtaking someone and when I slowed down to what I thought was a reasonable speed, I was still going so fast there would be no way I would talk myself out of it if police stopped me. There are some corners I can go around in my MX-5 at speed X and that's crazy fast. Range Rover Sport will go around the same corner at X plus 30 km per hour and it's nowhere close to the limit yet. And you know what? I like this car more than a BMW M3. Why? It's pointless, there is nowhere to drive it, it's the size of a barn, it's not economical, and it's a middle finger hanging out of the window towards the old tree-hugging eco-freaks. Only they won't see it because Range Rover will pass by so fast, just a couple of leaves will fall from the trees. And I like Range Rover Sport for all of the above completely irrational reasons. It's more comfortable and more practical than an M3 too. And if I get tired of tarmac, I can always take a shortcut without worrying about the undercarriage. Minimum ground clearance is 21 centimeters. In this setting, I can still enter the car with some dignity. In off-road setting, ground clearance increases to almost 29 centimeters. If you're in the market for a 5-liter V8, economy may not be at the top of your list, but this car uses around 13 liters per 100 kilometers combined, which is surprisingly close to what manufacturer claims. Just remember, refueling will take ages, as this thing has a 105-liter tank. A couple of years ago, I drove a V8 diesel Sport. It was relatively fast and it had enough torque to make the earth turn the other direction. However, supercharged model accelerates from 0 to 100 km per hour in 5.3 seconds and electronically governed 250 km per hour top speed is probably just to convince you to dish out another 35 grand for an SVR. Because 510 horsepower Range Rover Sport is neither the fastest Range Rover nor the fastest SUV on the market. This is kind of like a mid-range petrol SUV like BMW X5, xDrive 50i, Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT, Mercedes-Benz GLE 500, 
Porsche Cayenne GTS, you can get a faster and more expensive SUV. Speaking of more expensive, Range Rover Sport prices start at €62,000 for a 2.0-liter, yes, you heard me right, a 2.0-liter diesel model. If you want 510 horsepower, you'll have to dish out at least 95 grand, and this test example with extras costs around 130,000. That's because this is autobiography trim, which starts at 107,000, add a few options, and you end up with 130 grand, from which I would cut out maybe the 2,200 euro panoramic roof option. Premium sound system for almost 5,000? Of course you want that. Super comfy seats with 20 adjustment settings? That's just 1,200 euro and it's well worth it. Head up display for 1,300? Steep, but yes, you do need it. Just like a trailer hitch for 1,300. This test example has more modern sat-nav than what I tested a couple of years ago, however this is still not as good as in the Range Rover Velar. The glove box is large and it squeaks on opening. Something which should not happen at any price range and especially not at the small country house price range. You'll easily seat three adults in the back because there is a lot of headroom and legroom and the floor is flat. This test car has three zone climate control. There is an optional full size spare under the boot floor. A mini spare is standard unless you go for a seven seater, then you only get a repair kit. Boot volume from floor to window line is, according to my calculations, around 550 liters. Range Rover Sport is one of those cars you can't judge rationally. I mean, how can you look someone straight in the eye and tell them that 130 grand for a fast SUV is a good deal? But I totally get my friend who doesn't eat just to keep his previous generation Range Rover Sport running. And sooner or later, he'll sell a kidney just to get one of these. And what do you think about fast SUVs? Is there any way to justify buying something like this? Let me know in the comment section below. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. New episodes every Friday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.